All right, good afternoon. We're here today in the shop. We, uh, we're we working on a eight foot double paddle. Some people might know that as a, uh, a kayak paddle. Gonna use it uh, starting off on our the little eight foot punt that we built. But we've been reading on some uh, Hershoff's double paddle canoes and started looking real close at the uh, double paddle that he uses for it. We think it might be a fun little thing to have on the uh, on the punt when we're out there. We can paddle a bit and then we can double paddle a bit. So um, some of the dimensions, um, Hershoff liked a one and a quarter inch as one of the basic diameters. There'll be an oval shape to some of this, uh, some of the, some parts of the uh, blade. Oh boy, name's escaping me right now. The handle, I'll just call it the handle for now, in the middle. And it'll be oval, probably one and a quarter, and then it necks down as small as three quarters as it comes down here and starts getting into the uh, the blade portion. So the loom, is it the loom? Y'all tell me if I'm right or not. So down on the blade, he likes a blade that's not as wide as kind of the some of the kayak paddles you see today but not as narrow as a Greenland paddle. So the shape on this blade is going to be uh, start at the top. It's going to widen out to the six inches that it is here and then taper down a little bit. Still have a sizable tip in case you need to push off against a dock or the bottom or something like that. And uh, 20 inches long is what that blade's going to be. Six inches at the widest. And then on the side, we're going to put a little bit of a little bit of a cup into it. It's going to go curve, um, be a little bit of concave that way. And then he likes to also put a kind of a, a diamond shape on the bottom and then a little bit of concave on the top of it. So that'll be a lot of trimming and cutting with the bandsaw. Hopefully we don't hack it up uh, too much. But in order to get to where we're at today, what we did is we went and we got two spruce two by fours, eight foot long at the local lumber store. They had number two select, or number two grade. We would have preferred number one. I didn't see a pile of that anywhere. So we picked through a few of the boards, found the best we could, try to minimize the amount of big knots or loose knots that we had to deal with. So there's a few little pinhole knots. And we had plenty of, um, there's another strip this size or bigger where we could have cut another strip if we want, but we put it, uh, Put the two by four on our table saw and made it a square one and a quarter inch both ways. And then we cut up another chunk of it, or two other chunks of it actually, to make these little pieces here that are gonna make the uh, the width of the blade. And then we took the thick so wood, it's a thickened epoxy adhesive it's just like coming kind of the other thick sews you get, except this one's got wood flour in it. So it gives it that wood color. So now that we've got everything um, epoxied together, when we cut and sand later, the, uh, the lines that we'll have, if we don't do anything other than varnish it, will be, uh, have a wood color to them instead of kind of a, kind of a grayish epoxy color. So we uh, buttered up each uh, facing side of the of the boards and we use this little scrap piece that came off one of the two by fours and spread that epoxy out you know thin thin enough so we weren't getting a ton of excess material squeezing out in the joint when we clamped it together we do want to see some epoxy squeezing out though because if you don't that means you don't have enough epoxy in the joint and by squeeze out, I mean where the seam is here. Let me see if I can tighten this clamp, if we can see a little more. Coming out, or if it's been sitting too long. And you can see the little ridge there that's come up. That's just uh, excess epoxy. So now you don't want to squeeze too much big action shot of some squeeze out happening. It's been sitting here about 20-30 minutes. It's probably 
is probably about done all it's going to do. But you don't want to squeeze too much because you can squeeze all the epoxy out of the joint and have an epoxy starved joint. So that's not a that's not a good thing. But uh, back to the Thixa, the way it works, you can get it in the caulk cartridge and you screw this little mixing tip in it. It's two parts inside. There's an epoxy and the hardener. You come out both sides of this tip. It mixes together and uh, you can put it on and it's a very convenient product. You can kind of see with the cap how there's two different sides on there that have the epoxy and the hardener. Cartridges, this one's this one's pretty full. Some of the other products are not as full, so don't be surprised. I'm not sure why there's differences. Might have to do with the products are inside, but some you might look up in there and see it's uh, it's not not as much as you think it might be. But what we like about it is I didn't have to stand here measuring epoxy and hardener. I didn't have to stand here mixing in filler, getting it just right, and then after all the mixing, turn around and scoop it out and try to get it somewhere else. I'm able to apply this directly. Spin you around a little bit, sorry about that. Squeeze it out and have it apply directly to the board just as much or as little as I want. And then come along with a little spreader, spread it out. So you're kind of just using only as much as you need. And you're not left with a quarter cup full of epoxy when you're done. That is more expensive to do it this way, but it's an incredible time saver. And when I can, I prefer to save time over money because time turns into money somewhere else on the other things we do. So um, the folks at Jamestown Distributors, I believe this stuff was sent to us free though. So that's uh, full disclosure there, but we use it. Uh, we've bought plenty of it and paid for it. And um, they like to use our pictures. We like to use their epoxy. So it's not, uh, it's not, like I say, it's not the least expensive way to go, but I think it is very time saving. And you, like I'm showing over here, you can do some very precise applications with it. So this uh, paddle, back to the paddle, it's gonna be, we'll have to spend some time uh, tracing the, profiles out on the side of it now that it's uh, we'll let this dry right now we're showing about 60 in the shed we got a little a small heater running we'll leave that on and but it should be ready to go either way by uh, tomorrow afternoon come out here and take the clamps off and uh, start to uh, start having fun with uh, band saws and spoke shaves and little planes and other cutting type of tools. So that's, uh, that ought to do it.